last win. Yes, you're on that side. It's Stephen time. Malachi! It's Nolan! That's an Eric! It's Barry! Hello everyone, welcome to P2 Place, a place where people play card games, video games, and miniature games. Please, if you're not following us on Twitch, Twitter, or YouTube. Mm -hmm. Caitlin. Anyways, uh, if you're not following us on any of those, make sure to do so. Make sure, of course, you have your Twitch app downloaded. Make sure your notifications turned on. That way you get notified the second we go live. And of course, make sure you follow P2 Collectibles and Consignments on Facebook for all your card gaming and consignment needs, whether that is Yu-Gi-Oh, Card 5, Vanguard, Dragon Ball, Super, Pokemon, or Digimon. You can find the best prices for any upcoming product, a great community of people to play with, and some great owners. Anyways, welcome to this Yu-Gi-Oh! night. Here today, we of course have Gage playing at Emancipators. That's all he knows how to play right now, so congratulations to him. And then we have Gary playing the Mystery Machines. The mystery van is going to be a part of that. Scooby Doo's going to jump out for all of us today. Hopefully. I don't know. I've never heard of mystery machines, but I guess more or less it's just a machine style deck with some mystery to it. Made the Riddlers in there. I don't know, but anyways, yeah, so that will be our first round. We have 13 people today, so that should go about the three to four rounds required. Um, today we will start actually getting our one of our top three players deck lists. Yes, whoever one player from place first, second, or third will be picked to have a deck list recorded. That will be up on my YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can check out those interesting deck lists. But anyways, we're going to have our 40 minutes here. We're going to get our timer started here soon. Um, so that we can uh, have a, some fun. Majority of people are finished sitting up here. So it should be a lot of fun. As a reminder, tomorrow at 2.30, Paige and I are back with some more Star Wars X-Wing. Our campaign is coming to the end game now. Paige only needs a few more wins to officially uh, claim victory. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to cut off here just for a second so I can activate the timer so that all the players can get started. All right, here we are once again. Let us let us begin. Who? I didn't know who got it, but anyways, it looks like Gary's going to start off with an infinite track, and then he's going to bring out the big train, and then that's going to allow him to uh, search. Right, it grabs any, I think, machine type. High level monster, I believe so. It looks like he's going to... No, I think it's just any machine. But anyways, there's a Doom Dozer. Of course, that can special summon itself, I believe, by destroying a machine under the field. Yep, so anyways, the Doom Dozer is going to destroy the other Infinitrack to special summon itself to the field. Of course, then the Doom Dozer effect to then go out and search for a card. I believe it either... In the, no, a special summon's an Infinitrack, which will be the... Uh, Okay, so in a way there is an infinite thing special summon. I don't know what this is mysterious about. It just looks like Earth machines to me, but um, oh well. Um, anyways, the it tracks here. Um, I believe it has two four two fours and a level ten. Because almost all the big trains are all level tens. Always were, always have been. But anyways, here he goes for. I believe he's going to go the River Stormer here. If that was my guess. Yes, he is going the River Stormer, and then he's going to, looks like, yes, he's going to trigger the River Stormer effect to allow him to go for that all fabled search. Mugio, man, every card has a search effect in some form or another. But anyways, he's just going to get himself, it uh, looks like a bullet, yep, a bullet train. Add that to his hand. That will give him another 10 if he so wishes. Okay, so that's summoning out the bullet train. I believe as long as he owns a uh, level 10 higher train. So anyways, it looks like he's going to go for a link. Looks like a link one here. So that's going to be their main, the Finitrack's main um, uh, link monster here. Or the train's main link monster. But anyways, here we go for the overlay. Those are two 10s. So what will he overlay for? Okay, so he's going to go, um, not Gustav Max, um, there is that Gustav Max. 
Anyways, um, it's a train that can discard itself to protect itself from uh, card effects. It's a either player's turn, so it is really nice. But anyways, it is a level ten. Oh shoot, who is that? I don't. I believe it's not Gustav Max. Gustav Max, I think, is the rail cannon. But anyways, um, the effect of the Link Monster to bring back um his guy. That's going to then um bring up the River Stormer. No way. But anyways, it looks like he's going to uh, move that and the uh, other infinite track here. He's going to go for another Link Monster. Uh, okay, <laughs> another one of them. Okay, so uh, very interesting so far. It's very typical. The plays right now are very typical to the Earth Machine deck. So anyways, it looks like he's going to be able to special summon out um, one of the infinite track. And then he's going to go for another link to play here. Um, it looks like he's going to go for... I'm not sure. Oh, no, that looks like the Cleave Fort. Um, it's the Cleave Fort uh, link monster. I believe it gets a buff, and um, your opponent can't do anything against it. Uh, let me actually find out what it is here. Looks like he's counting up his uh, machines here. Looks like he's putting a few. It looks like he's shuffling back a bat, a lot, which is very interesting. Oh, I think that's the Klee uh, monster's effect. Anyways, I'll check it out here for you. Uh, Klee Fort. Scouts. Let's just put Scout and see what comes up. I know Cleefort have a Scout. Ah, uh, shoot! I can't. I can't think about how the Cleeforts is summoner um <coughs> or um anything. But anyways, here comes out of Fortress, and then I uh, believe that I think he's activating the spell, and then that's a uh, Machina Fortress and the other. Makata Citadel. Makata Citadel and Makata Fortress, but funny enough, Fortress can summon itself thanks to the pitching out the Citadel, so it is the necessary um, level requirement for it. Um, let's see. So anyways, anyway, that is the inboard. Anyways, uh, Makata... And well, all the uh, effects on the board won't be active here. Anyways, we're going to start with an up start goblin, giving Gary an extra 1,000 life points to allow for an extra draw. But anyways, that dark rule no more means that neither the cleave fort, the fortress, nor the um, the number 86, I believe it's its number. But anyways, uh, here comes Analyzer. Then he's going summoning Analyzer. It's basically a Cyber Dragon effect, and then. Um, He's brought out the uh, Quirky Mirror Guardian, and then the Analyzer uh, went off. Then effect to, of course, special summon the Quirky Mirror Supplier. And then the Supplier is getting another Quirky Mirror Guardian. Man, I've played too much Ad Emancipators for um, this. Anyways, here we go. He's going to then special summon out the Researcher. And then uh, that's going to activate the effect to look at the top five. I believe a special summons a rock non tuner. Or is that the one that's just special summons any rack? Okay, so another quick more guardian. I don't think the guardians were hard ones per turns for their negates. Again, you have to show at least a rock in your hand to physically keep the guardians alive or a Kikimura. Not impossible, this is a rock based deck, anyways. Anyways, that's going to go into. The water one. So it's interesting. He decides to go into um, the water type. Um, so there's no water type in grave to trigger um, the water guy. But but anyways, yeah, the Kikamora Guardian will um, stop and the Biru play. Anyways, the water one um, it looks at top five, looks at how many rocks, and then gets to spend that many things back to your opponent's um, deck or extra deck.
But anyways, so he's going to spin back the Kli, and of course it looks like the uh, the Dreadnought, number 36, 86, number 86. Number 86 here, um, using the uh, Reptite. Oh, I forget what the Water One's name is. But anyways, uh, Makata Citadel still is um, active. The Fortress here, um, no, Citadel, Fortress is the, uh, no, Fortress is on the field, Citadel's the one in Grave. So the Citadel is still very much an active card onto the field, um, as is Fortress, since, since Fortress can bring itself back out by just pitching the necessary um, level from your hand. So anyways, it looks like he's just going to go into the Reptite here. I don't believe he has a win, but anyways, he's going to look at that top five again. He's going to special summon then the Seeker. That, of course, is the last Adamancipator he has um, to s seek out, but I uh, no summon and uh, excavate. He still has, I believe, the fire, the fire um, one, but yeah, neither main uh, synchro monsters can activate their effect. There's not a water nor a wind currently in the graveyard. But anyways, uh, Seeker is activating his effect. I think he special summons a rock non-tuner. They almost all special summon rock non-tuner. I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a, it has to be a rock monster to uh, fully resolve the effect. Otherwise, the, um, otherwise, uh, can't resolve it. And it has to be a non-tuner. But anyways, it looks like the Rapti and the uh, Seeker go out for a Crystal Wing. So currently, um, it's a Crystal Wing as like the only major negate. So anyways, here comes the attack with Darker or No More up on the field. Up on the field, um, Gary will not take any damage in the effect. But anyways, um, the Machina Fortress is tricked. This, right? I cannot help yeah. you with the okay. so at least 500. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know if I'm officially allowed to help you at all. Any questions you have, ask us. If I have a water inverted, you have a water inverted. Which, as of now, I do not. So I will summon Rune Force. I get rid of Center Down and the Bullet Train. So if you had like 600 light, or like if you had 1200 light, you activated it. This one is a two mock cards. So, when this card is special, this card is added, I can special it. Uh, when it's uh, special, I can send a card to Grave. Okay. No effect. Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'm going to grab the Yay, high five, Ben. No, I did not. Hey, Daisy. Ben is able to do like puzzles that are hard difficulty on some puzzle games. Like she's she's on sixty three. She's smart. Yeah, she's really smart, and I'm I'm glad that she's enjoying it. Uh, uh, I apologize about that, but I did turn on. Uh, I don't know how audio helpful my uh, webcam is, but anyways, uh, it looks like uh, Rune Force was placed, and um, it looks like we were able to get uh, the Machina. Oh my gosh, whatever the Machina won that. Get. And then uh, he's going to play Gear Gear X over both the Dark, like Machina guy, uh, Sniper Man. And then, um, so Gear Gear X allows you to then search out any uh, 
machined your hand, so he's going to add the Pegasus Star to his hand. I think it's a level 4 lower machine. Swinging so Ruin Star is going to go swing in over the uh, water at Emancipator Synchro. And then... And then Gear Gia will be. Ah, uh, maybe it's not strong enough to go. And then it looks like Gear Gia X is going to be able to go over the uh, current rock monster on the field. So it looks like there may be a discussion on the um, monster in its itself. So um. So it looks like the rock monster is trying to put one of the guys face down. So anyway, it looks like the Gear Gear X is going to get paced, uh, put face down. Of course, when that passes the turn, it will literally mean that um, it will be stuck face down until unless it has like a permanent, like a permanent floodgate effect where it has to pee, like floodgate trap hole. But anyways, um, so anyways, Gage is gonna go here. The question is, what does he have left in his hand? Does he have anything to begin the Emancipator um, excavations here? So anyways, we have just a set and a set. So it looks like no Emancipators to help here. Here on Gary, we know Gary only has the Pegasus train in his uh, hand currently, thanks to Gear Diaz X, and that's going to be an anti-spell fragrance. Um, basically, all spell cards must be set before they can be activated. That does trigger on Gage's turn as well. That is a constant, continuous trap card. A really good one, though. I, I still quite enjoy anti-spell fragrance here. But anyways, it looks like here comes the Pegasus train coming down onto the field. So it looks like he's taking a look. I believe he can special summon a train from the uh, the graveyard. So anyway, see, I do not know what train that was. Um, it looks like, no, right. He's probably making them level 10. So he's grabbing the Dura Crane probably. So that they're both uh, level 10s here. That way he can go right up into the... Um, looks like that's uh, Gustav Max or the Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon. I'm just going to remove that will burn 2k on um, gauge here and then pretty much uh, then that will probably go up into number the one that can attack from like do like 8k damage to uh, someone's face I feel like the effects won't trigger here but uh, Gary does take game one there just by uh, going I thought he was going to trigger the big train and to slam in and do a lot of damage but yeah that was the uh the big dreadnought, the number 88, Libe, yeah, there it is, Libe. Libe is like the one um, OTK card for the train deck um, because of everything in the nature. But we do have a win for good old Gary, that is not the win. With uh, Mystery Trains using ruin, Runecation and uh, some different things than uh, a normal train deck. Machina Rune Force. Uh, no, it's Rune Force. Rune Force. Machina Rune Force. Let's banish uh, machine monsters from your graveyard whose total number levels equals 12 or more. When your opponent activates a card or effect during the battle phase, <laughs> during the battle phase, in fact, you can pay half your life points to get the activation. If you do, have your opponent's life points. As our, opponent, as our uh, players take a bit of you decide. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can summon up to three of those banished Machina monsters. So it's a Machina. All right. Um, pretty neat. The art is on it. Pretty neat. Wait, when did the heck did this card come out? It's a book 20. Oh, it came out in a... a where did it... Oh, a Burst of Destiny. I think that's when the other... Like the other major Machinas came out at... Other Machinas, yeah, like Machina, Rune Sclarp, uh, Unclasper, un Unclasper, the other one. Oh, it's Gear Frame. That was the Machina that was there. God, I couldn't figure it out. Yep, Super Dreadnought, Cannon Gustav Max. Let's see if I can't figure it. I know it's Libe. Oh, number 81, Super Dreadnought, uh, Rail Cannon, Super Dora. 
Dora was the one we saw in the first game. And then, yeah, it's uh, Libe. It's Super Dread, not Rail Cannon, Juggernaut Libe. Someone needs to go back and figure out how to re say they have these names. Ah, gosh. Trains. Choo choo, everyone. Choo choo. Maybe this stick will be our first. I don't know. Zinn, of course, is here today, and Zinn has been uh, ruling over the local scene. Anyways, we start with a Makana, um, Makana supplier, and um, that will then allow him to special summon out researcher and seeker. They need at least a rock non adamantator rock monster to be on the field. Now, um, Supplier doesn't actually get it searched there for the uh, Kikimura Guardian because Supplier only gets a search if it's special summon to the field. So anyways, it looks like he's triggering one or the other. So he's done Seeker, either Seeker or Researcher. Um, they both practically do the same thing in su summoning a rock. So anyways, the uh, the other rock monster we saw that got to flip down one of, my, one of your opponents, one of uh, Gary's monsters face down when it got destroyed by bottom. So, uh, so uh, Gage does have quite the field set up right now. Um, he has burnt through two out Emancipator Searchers, that being, of course, Seeker and Researcher. He does still have Analyzer to trigger if so, if he can uh, get an Analyzer. When it looks like he's going to go for uh, two overlaying two level fours for uh, Garn? No. Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller, okay. Um, Abyss Dweller can remove a source on your player's turn to uh, turn off your opponent's graveyard. Really neat. Um, I'm guessing trying to keep Gary off from his machine since we saw that he basically could use his graveyard and Dweller basically keeping that. So anyways, we're going to start our um, prank kid combos here by going for the Mau Mau Mew over the Roxy's Roxy's effect. Then when it's link, uh, link someone to make a prank kid's monster, uh, he's going to banish a... Researcher, and then he's going to be able to special summon out a dropsies, and then he will be able to. Uh, is that the no? That's a, he draws first, and then he goes for the uh, search. But anyways, here's Bow Wow Bark. He, um, he contributed to get back to um, and emancipators back to his hand on his opponent's turn only. Quick effect. Speed, and then the Dropsies will claim him a thousand life points, uh, gauge a thousand life points as he summoned out the Roxies. So, a. Um, Alright, well, here we go. So, anyways, it looks like he's going to take the Seeker and the Roxies here. That's probably going to make Reptite. Yep. So, he's going to go the Reptite effect here. And he's a Spanish screamer, right? If I'm a winning So he's just a monster right now. Yeah. I'm supposed to be moving next month. I can't think of that. If you get surgery, you win shit. I have no problem. I can't. I have no idea. Yeah, these are all, uh, and I will pass. So he's an army. Yeah. No, that's all. Awesome. Monster, yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Okay. And doing standbys, I'll lock me a fist roller. Graveyard. Do you need help, Tyler? Yeah, Blackwing, Simone, and the Poison Wing. Easy. Thank you. Okay. I don't. Summon Doki Doki. That's good. Good match. What does that do again? So you can only control one attribute. So you can only control water, fire, earth, or wind. Okay. So you have a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> this is a difficult decision. Now, so it's on activation for Mystic Mind. Off keep wind. I will attack. Keep out. Okay, I got it. And I will have to pass. Uh, so, is that it's a monster negate? Yes. And is it a destroy or just negate? Negate and destroy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 
I am susceptible to. What is the fungus? I think it's a ring. I think it's a ring. I can add. I can add one back. I can't. Y'all gonna negate that. And I, and I'm very susceptible to that, to that fungus. It's like animals. No, 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 no
All right, but anyways, we still have the Machina uh, Fortress up on it. Oh, it's urgent schedule, right? Urgent schedule. Here we go. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, special one, level four, or monster, and so that's how we got level five or higher Earth Machine monster from your deck of defense position, but they negate their effects. Okay, the effects are already negated per the uh, skill drain on the field. You cannot declare attacks the turn you activate this card, except with machine monsters. If this card is sent from the graveyard, you can add one level 10 machine monster from your deck to your hand. So anyways, that's how the Fortress came out, the fact that um, Gage had more monsters than um, Gary had. So now here comes the Bullet Train coming down to the field. Again, having a machine monster is, I think, the only requirement for special summon Bullet Train. But anyways, here we go. Uh, bullet train over one of the face downs. It looks like that was an analyzer and pass the turn. Uh, again, there's not much you can really do with that that crystal wing up on the field, being that you have to find a uh, monster that is high enough to kill a 3k. To kill a 3k, um, maybe even just 100 over. I was about to call it a. Uh, a Pokemon or something, but I'm like, oh wait, that's not right. This is this is Yu-Gi-Oh, not Pokemon or Digimon. But anyways, yeah, so it's gonna be a little tough. Gage can basically just sit there with the Crystal Wing. Um, again, he is stuck too. But anyways, it looks like uh, oh, Bullet Train was 3K. Okay, so it looks like the Crystal Wing just crashed with the Bullet Train. Um, not sure exactly why Gage wants to do. That. Oh, because Gage wants to be able to play out rocks. Right, he needs to. Um, he needs to play out his earth types because of um, because well he's on the goza. So anyways, the analyzer uh, coming down here again because of the cyber dragon. Oh, uh, that was a cyber dragon, but oh no, he must have just normal summoned it. Anyways, um, here we go for the draw, and it looks like he was able to grab a uh, a guy back to his hand. Anyways, here comes the gear frame. To his hand, um, he's still under uh, skill drain. I don't know how good skill drain is in a deck where a lot of the monsters need their skills to be going off. Now, give credit, there's still a lot of big beef stick monsters. I mean, Adam Emancipators definitely um, don't want to be doing much in their deck style since since they need all their effects to be triggered off. Um, anyways, here we go. Fortress over the Analyzer. I believe Fortress is 28, Analyzer is 16. So it ain't very strong. And then gear frame into the face down. Um, so it looks like that was a Doki Doki. Again, um, it's not exactly helping Gage here because the fact is, uh, I'm now realizing it, um, Gage is actually trapped out from even going into any of his excavations. Um, he can't excavate at all. He can't trigger an excavation. So he basically has to play out something to uh, allow for a tuning. Um, he, he does have um, the two. He does have a uh, a two star tuner there, so he can play any four. So, anyways, he's going to activate the Ad Emancipator um, spell card here to bring a monster back from the graveyard here. And especially if it's an Ad Emancipator, he gets to trigger the effect. I doubt he's going to choose an Ad Emancipator. Um, it has to be a rock, though. It's not like a perfect. Um, Monster Reborn, but anyways, a call by the grave on the target of the card. Can Monster Reborn, like anything, has to target the card, it's going to attempt to Monster Reborn. But yeah, um, so a call by the grave, the one and only call by the grave, to quickly remove that uh, target. Anyway, so now we have a Foolish, bur uh, uh, foolish Burial. Zane got it? Yeah, one to two. All right, so uh, Gary sending a machine there to the graveyard. I'm not sure. I think it, I believe he sent the Citadel to the graveyard so that he can have Citadel. Anyways, here comes Gear and then 28 off of that Machina Fortress uh, coming in. So uh, Gage is definitely in an uphill battle. That um, and yeah, that's just a scoop there, and Gary takes the win. And, Mystery Machines get to win. Um, however, Mystery Machines... However, Mystery Machines work. I'm not exactly sure. This looks like more or less it was just a good old-fashioned um, machines. Yeah, this more looked like it was just a typical Earth Machine deck. 
But um, time is ticking down here. Um, again, welcome to P2 Collectibles. Again, um, if you miss this, do not worry. It will be up on YouTube. I don't know how good of it will be up on YouTube because if no one heard anything in my camera, just decided they wanted to pick up all of, uh, of um, nothing or the background. Yeah, that would be fun. I know you all love that. Uh, I guess I'll have to check it out for um, when I go to edit. This probably won't be up tomorrow because I won't be around much, but um, I can assure you that um, I'll tr I believe I'll try to get up Monday um, with the uh, deck list as the uh, winners on deck list as well. Um, if nothing else, I hope uh, nothing else. Yeah. So again, I'm doing a bunch of deck list uh, deck gameplay here for a lot of Digimon stuff as we roll at in to the end of the BT7 era and roll into the BT6 BTA era. I've even started doing all all my note taking for the set um, so I can start uh, doing the set review for BTA and let me tell you it's going to be a good set. Uh, it's going to be an interesting set with the Joel Grass mechanics and everything, but yeah. So, uh, do stay tuned here. We will be uh, back here soon with uh, round 2. Welcome to it. Let's begin today's second round. Well, I think the last time we streamed this, we had Gary and uh, Gary Zinn as our top feature match. But, uh, no, Gary, no, Zinn Nolan, Zinn Nolan, I should read my own names here. But anyways, uh, yeah, but they think they were playing Flawunderies and Speed Rides. But anyways, today Zen's got Despia and no one's got XYZ good stuff. Whatever good stuff's in the XYZ, this XYZ deck. Probably all the good stuff. All the hand traps. All the hand traps. Everything good. All the all the high expensive cards. We're going to see all the high rarity stuff here. No one went out and got himself a playset of Ultimate Rare Forbidden Droplets. So that's some good stuff. <laughs> No, I can't even afford that. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I don't think so. I didn't get rich just overnight on my YouTube and Twitch channel, so can't afford it. Not that I'd matter. Would never want it. Would never even use it. Don't play the game enough. But anyways, we will be beginning the next 40 minutes here, and I have realized I did never set up my timer for you all and round one. So how were you going to tell when 40 minutes were up? Well, who, who knows? Apparently I can't uh, activate my timer. I apologize. I just realized, right, I didn't have my timer. But anyways, I will be uh, here cutting, uh, cutting off here for a second so that uh, we can... Start the next game. Well, maybe another minute here. Um, it looks like the majority that are still out there are uh, are still um, going together and setting up. But anyways, this is round two. I should have gotten my stuff out for all of you, but uh, I didn't. So I'll go get that for round three. All right. All right, here we go. So it looks like Zen is going to be taking the first turn. Despia is a very interesting archetype here. They are about to get even better with um with their structure deck about to come out. But anyways, here comes uh, Despia. Uh, I think it's Masquerade. Um, this one, of course, will allow him to get the Despia field spell, which is Despia Theater. Oh, no, 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 that's not Despia. Good 
That's being the truth. But anyways, uh, so yeah. Um, so anyways, then the field spell allows him to fusion summon um, uh, monsters from using from his hand or side of the field. But anyways, it looks like he, then he will be grab. It looks like then he will be uh, grabbing and using a fight for patchwork. That will give him a polymerization and then a edge imp, which is an edge imp chain. So this is not straight despia. This is despia with a um. This is despia with um a nice. With um some fluffle engine work, but no, that's Albar. Albar, the uh, jester of despia, was the guy, and then of course they got despia, the feeder of the branded. Which is uh, has, which is a strong field spell if you've never seen it. During your main phase, you can summon you can fusion summon one level eight or higher fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. If a non face if a face up non fusion fairy monster you control leaves the field by opponent's card effect or destroyed by battle, you can target one level or a higher fusion monster in your grave special summon. Currently, uh, we have currently the fusion monster on the field is the one that will burn you for a one thousand um. For 800 life points for every effect that you activate. So, anyways, he's going to activate the uh, Despia, the Despia Quick Play spell card. Um, there, that's going to, of course, allow him to go for yet another um, fusion summon here. So, anyways, by of course banning Sheen the material here. So it looks like he went the Jester, another other, another one, and then um, some guy, oh, quite a big dude. Um, and then looks like he's going to be able to. Uh, so you're gonna be able to draw a bunch here as well. So then he's gonna pop off. Uh, that's the fusion monster he just summoned. Uh, I'm not even really sure what the, uh, this uh, good stuff is just um, yet. And then of course, um, I don't think the. Um, Sorry, that was at the end of Nolan's turn, by the way, too. Um, so that is two fusion monsters. Um, Either of which can be supported by the branded uh, uh, theater there, because of course they're both uh, not fusion, non, they're non fusion monsters. So it will be uh, very interesting to see how exactly, um, or where exactly, um, Zen goes from here. Um, again, he does have the burn here from uh, the masquerade dragon, and then um, his big guy, which I'm pretty sure is from Battle of Chaos. I think it's a secret rift from the Battle of Chaos. So it looks like we're just going to go to the battle phase here. And then uh, Masquerade and his other guy will come swinging in as of right now. Only a chain and a couple of spell cards are in the graveyard. Uh, then we have a Flawed Blade. Looks like the Fog I'm gonna Fog Blade uh, the other monster, meaning that uh, no one will only take the Masquerade Dragon. And that also turns off the other uh, Fusion Monsters effects as well. So, um, well, really nice. So anyways, it looks like he's going to go for the theater yet again. He's going to Fusion Summon. Um, looks like he's going to send from his hand once again. So it looks like we have a Dasher and the guy that actually has a Fog Blade attached to it. So you go for, um, it looks like a Preda, one of the Preda Plant monsters here. Um, the Fog Blade, of course, I'm getting removed from the field again. Its target no longer physically on the field, so it fizzles away. So as of right now, no one is up a hill battle, because again, he is going to get burned for every effect he activates by 800. He's already taken the Masquerade Dragon's attack, but I think it's 28 or 25. So he is down on the life points. <laughs> the Masquerade Dragon definitely brings um, Despia a reason, but Despia will get a whole lot stronger, let me tell you, when that structure deck drops to the TCG. Though it's got some good reprints in it. I will not lie about that one. And lucky enough, the Albaz, the uh, Jester is... So in other words, it looks like we have a Rocket Tracer. Rocket Tracer effect is, is triggering. Uh, that would be 800 points to... No, and then um, the looks like the Predator Plant monster is going to trigger there, and no one's scooping enough. Zin taking the first game. Game, just uh, proving why Zin is still on the top of the seat. No one can take down Zin apparently, and they even our great Jesus can't even do it. Well, sooner or later, great seats of power will be taken down. Jumpa Toda, I really don't care. Um, Zin's doing an amazing job um, holding off. I think this is his seventh straight 
um, this will be his seventh straight um, victory where he's held the title. But yeah, I mean, he doesn't play the same deck every uh, week. He plays different decks almost every Friday, even on the free tournaments. So he's done Dragon Maids, Floundries. He's done Fluffles with a small cu with a couple of Golden uh, Golden Lords in it. So yeah, um, or the Eldritch Elderly Boy there. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Zen's still holding strong. I wasn't kind of expecting. I mean, we haven't really even seen Nolan's deck go off. We just saw a Rocket Tracer, a Fog Blade, and a Set card, and a whatever the face time was that got nuked off the field. Um, yeah, uh, Zen's deck made a lot of monsters, and that was about it. Um, but then again, that makes complete sense. This is Despia. This is considered like one of the top decks of the format. Definitely one of the high contenders for Tier One. Now, I can't really tell you everything for Tier 1 in Yu-Gi-Oh! because I don't keep a full track of Yu-Gi-Oh! I like to talk about it to you all here on the Twitch streams. I haven't done a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! content. Maybe it's because I just prefer Digimon Watch <laughs> over Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, I've played it long enough to appreciate it. And appreciate some of the rules and nuances of Yu-Gi-Oh! But it's definitely not a game. If you're trying to get your kids into games, um, get them into some Pokemon or Digimon or even Carfly Vanguard. And then, then you bring them up to Yu-Gi-Oh! Because holy crap, there are rulings here and rulings for days that if you don't understand them, you're going to be pretty screwed. Plus, I think you can get way more budgetary um, gameplay personally in Digimon than you can in like Yu-Gi-Oh! Even Pokemon's that way now too. Pokemon's going high sky high in some of their um, prices as well. But yeah. So anyways, our players have finished siding here. I'm going to take a guess that Nolan probably wants to take the first tier. Um, I wouldn't think he'd want Zen to set up a board presence, but who knows? Maybe, maybe he likes going uh, second. <laughs> I mean, he does get to get that extra card. Um, anyways, here we go. Um, yeah, I think we have two Despia players because I think Jeff's playing Despia as well. We have a couple of interesting decks. We have like a Code Talker deck that is out there, which is very interesting. We saw some machines, and um, yeah, we definitely got a lot of um, interesting decks. So let's see what our deck. Oh, apologies, is all about. Clearly, Nolan's deck is about setting cards <laughs> and setting monsters. <laughs> oh man, must be <laughs> Nolan must not be getting what he needs out of that. Ooh, ew. All right, well, I don't know. Zen doesn't look um, all that happy about their hand either. So we'll have to see where this goes. Oh, you okay? Well, we have a set two pass for Zen. God, neither player is setting up amazingly high today. Um. Okay, oh, we're doing uh, XYZ Rockets. And we have Anti-Spell Fragrance, must have been flipped up. So anyways, uh, here's Singing Lanius, which is very interesting. So anyways, we have the Rocket Monster. I believe they're both twos or fours. Okay, so now we have a, a Raid Raptor. Um, there's uh, Force Tricks. Ah, oh, gosh, I have to remember what that guy was. Um, Force Tricks, I think, allows you to get a Raid Raptor to your hand. Ooh, man, well, this is XYZ good stuff. I mean, is he going to summon the big, big Raid Raptor himself? The one that deals a thousand points of damage to your opponent? Uh, it should be interesting. Um, so where, where does he go? So it's going to uh, special summon the Raid Raptor here. Oh, uh, looks like um they. So it looks like um he didn't have anything. So um it looks like he couldn't trigger the effect. I'm guessing that um the nature is that he needed to have an X Y Z with a Raid Raptor monster under it. So yeah, a little hurt. So anyways, the Force Tricks and the Raid Raptor going out. That's probably going to make the, uh, the Raid Raptor Link Monster. Yep, that is going to make the Raid Raptor Link Monster. Then it's going to trigger its effect. So you go for its search of, a, I believe, a Winged Beast. Special summon a Winged Beast Monster. So there's Zephra of the Black Wing. So we'll have to see how exactly Zephra the Black Wing uh, plays through. 
now that will go off. Well, I guess it's not going to go off. Anyways, it's going to take with the Link Monster. That's going to go for uh, Rusty Bardish. And then we have a Nibiru. Oh, man, that's got to hurt. Nibiru right on the Rusty Bardish. The Rusty Bardish is 23, so, I mean, the Nibiru token is only 23. The problem, though, is that uh, well, it's definitely not going to be able to go through that Nibiru token. The Nibiru itself. Um, we have, oh, what? Looks like, um, oh, that's fight for patchwork. Okay, that's patchwork. So he's going to grab a polymerization and a chain into his hand. Um, pretty interesting. So it looks like um, he hit him with a draw and lock bird to, of course, um, keep him searching through the deck, which Despia loves to do, um, especially their jester to be able to look for their um, field spell so that they can trigger um, to grab everything they need so this should be um interesting so 3k to the 23 or the 25 whatever um uh bardish is anyways here we go for <sighs> so one well that anti-spell is working in uh favor to um nolan here is keeping sin not that truly would matter even getting the field spell wouldn't help because field spell would have to be set before it could be activated for a turn and we have a special summon of a monster or normal summon of the monster that's doing some kind of search but anyways it looks like it is that the star separate with the uh okay so if that's a star separate it, it just uh the seat it just sent out the one one, which I believe it is. So it looks like we have the Zephyros triggering here, the special summon itself, of course, pop, uh, sending back the anti-spell fragrance back to no one's hand. Um, that now will be two level fours. Um, the seat is here as well, which is a level four. If that is the... Um, is... is Yeah. Actually, no. Watch your fine. Yes. Yes. Like, no, you went to a really Oh, it's not every card. Yeah, 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 ye
the other uh, Despia one, most of the Despia or cards, spell cards in the Despia set or the Albia set all just fusion summon a monster in some aspect or another. Again, still having to be set so that, um, because of the anti spell, so again. Okay, so now we have a set, um, Polymerization fusing a Despia, uh, the Jester and the Big Nibiru. Um, uh, what the that's a light in the dirt. So I believe that's uh, something one of the uh, the Alba bat the uh, Alistair. Oh no, that's the one that can turn one of your. So the monster he just summoned is the, is the uh, guy who could actually turn one of your guys to zero and then basically um, swing over them with three k. Anyways, um, he's going to activate the other one, which looks like he went back to add the Jester to his hand, and I believe then he's going to get, be able to trigger um, a Fusion Summon here, um, and he's going to be able to banish the material. Banish the materials here. And then it uh, looks like that will make Masquerade. He was able to get out yet another um, another uh, Jester, and that is game. Uh, man, poor old Nolan. Not able to really do do anything, but it doesn't help that uh, two nibs coming down on your face to clean up your board presence um, isn't all that good for you. But uh, oh, Zen, Zen just got going there. Um, being able to see everything he needed to see, being able to build his board presence, Zen just shows his strength here and why he still is top dog. Top dog here for us all. Alright. Well, it looks like everyone's ready to go. I'll go mute here just for a micro of a second so that we can, um, I can announce the timer so you don't have to listen to me scream it. So, uh, looks like we have a half a second. It looks like we just have a half a second, second uh, here, but I believe everyone is now ready to go as we get moving to the aspect of time. Apologies, I uh, totally sometimes forget to start this stupid timer. But anyways, it should be very interesting to see who exactly gets it. But anyways, here we go. Okay, we've seen Kay play the Vendrids a couple of times before. So anyways, we're going to summon the Water uh, Stone at Emancipator, and then that will allow him to uh, special summon out the Seeker. And then here we go for the excavation effects of the good old of at Emancipators. So he was looking at the top five, and he's going to be able to special summon a Rock Non Tuner to the field. So anyways, we have Doki Doki coming out to the field on that summon. And then Doki Doki effect, he's going to pitch out the level four uh, Hikimura Garden so that he can then, um, and then he's going to be able to then special summon out the analyzer here. Thanks. The Doki Doki allows him to pitch out, pitch out a rock type monster and then um, he is capable of then special summoning the uh, to a uh, rock monster of the same level as the one that he pitched. So anyways, the analyzer is going to trigger here, and it looks like it whiffed. Oof. Most of the time, time this deck does not whiff its uh, searches. So anyways, he's going to trigger here, and he's going to go for an 8. This will actually let him have, if he goes for the water uh, at Emancipator Synchro monster. Yes, this will actually give him... Um, the its effect where it can do a negate because he does have a water uh, type in the graveyard. The other two are going to go to a Hauki Fibrex here. Um, that's going to allow him to special summon a tuner to the field. And that, of course, that tuner will have its effects negated uh, per Hauki Fibrex. So it looks like he's going to summon. Uh, he's going to summon a tuner. I'm not exactly sure what tuner. I know for a fact it's not the seeker because the fact is he probably wants the seeker to trigger its effects here. All right, so it's got the Hulk, which can uh, trigger its effect to uh, become a tuner if it so wishes. But um, no, it can secret summon to other monsters. It can secret summon itself with like formless synchron and stuff. 
and which will allow you to draw a card. But anyways, Gage has two face downs, the water uh, water at Emancipated Monster, and now he's going to flip up Anti-Spell Fragrance, meaning that all spell cards will now have to be placed face down and then triggered on your on the opposing turn. Basically turn them into trap cards. Uh, quick plays can still be played on your opponent's turn because they are quick play cards. So anyways, we have a set of a monster on K side of the field. But anyways, if you've ever seen Vendred, they're an old zombie archetype. They were probably, they first came out and when um, the original archetype started, um, when we first started, um, when we started um, the era of the Link Summoning era. So anyways, there goes the um, the Water 1 is triggering its effect. By the way, almost all Adamant's Paters are a once per turn um, effect. So we have a special summon of a Seeker. Seeker then triggering its effect to then summon out that Roxy's. Just the power of Adamant's Paters in its full. <laughs> <sighs> oh, apologies. But anyways, it looks like we have two going into Naturia Beast. Again, um, any spell card that is activated um, Gage can uh, mill a card and negate the activation. The fun of about a thousand um, to mill, uh, by the way, uh, Nat Beast is not a once per turn effect. Um, yeah, it can um, do anything it wants to do because, you know, Naturia Beasts, for some reason, were never restricted with a uh, hard once per turn. They were literally just restricted to milling your deck to death. I mean, I've never seen a spell card deck that can, you know, will it. I mean, you could probably play in the Truria Beast and then just, like, do it enough to where you mill. Mill out your opponent. To mill out your opponent, but still, I'm not sure. I don't think you could even do it. Either way, pretty neat idea, nonetheless. But anyways, we have a set here. Um, the problem is the... The uh, Adam Emancipator Synchro Monster will just trigger off its effect again, and or I guess no, we'll just swing into the attack, and uh, I guess the Churia and Halki, I think we'll go for the game here. So anyways, I think that is going to gauge. Uh, okay, just couldn't put any defense there. The Churia Beast doesn't help, and neither does that uh, anti-spell fragrance. All right, well, anyways, um, we'll have to see how this goes. Um, K still has two more games to fully play here before, um, before um, everything officially comes down to the end here. So I mean, she still has very much a chance to claim victory and claim two more games against the good old Gage. <laughs> oh, apologies. All right. Well, anyways, our opponents here are shuffling up. It looks like Gage may be taking some time to side some cards. I'm not sure if he took any cards to side or simply just uh, doing some shuffling mechanic there. But either way, um, yeah. But anyways, we are probably going to uh, see. I would. The problem is, um, K needs to go first. Gage can't. Um, go first because this deck can easily make a quick setup and some uh, deadly boards. And let me tell you, it can it can make some deadly deadly boards uh, if you let it go first. Oh crap! Oh, apologies, I'm a little tired. Mm, num 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 num. Work uh, work got to me. I'm guessing, but I'm guessing it looks like Gage is gonna go first. That's exactly what I want to do with an Anna Emancipator deck. Um, anyways, here comes a normal summon of a Roxy's. And then that will, of course, we start the, the Prank Kids engine here. I mean, there's still a good chance that, you know, he didn't see what he needed, like the Researcher um, or the um, Researcher or uh, Researcher or um, Seeker. But he does still get to get a draw there from, of course, the Roxies. Um, then here comes the Dropsies. Um, some people like fl Fancies. I play fa I played Fancies in my version of it. And then uh, Bow Wow Bark. There's people who prefer to go to Doodle instead of Bow Wow Bark. But either, either one works. You're just basically just trying to get the other ones to the grave so you can just summon up another Roxy so you have, so you have a level 4 Rock on the field, which then will allow you to trigger off Seeker and... Um, 
researcher if you have it in hand, which a good chance you probably will. Hey, look at that. It is a researcher. Who would have guessed? And the researcher effect here, going to look at top five. It's going to special summon. Ooh, wow, he almost uh, didn't hit that. Um, that was three spell cards with, uh, I think, two of the same monster, two Kikimura Guardian. But anyways, now the Guardian is up. Now that is a negate on the field. A uh, monster effect, by the way, as well. A uh, monster <laughs> negate effect. But anyways, here we go for the two and the five. Here comes the Rapti. Rapti, of course, will not be able to get it on opponent. Other effect is there's currently no wind monster in the graveyard, but the Rapti, of course, bringing out the Seeker. Now, Seeker is going to trigger his effect. Um, I will say one thing. I'm kind of glad Blood Dragon, though I had never seen really a Master Duel at full power, um, I will say something I think is pretty nice not to have. Um, not to have... Um, Thank you, DT and Paul. Sixteen twenty-five. I was terrible at the end. I'm terrible at long games. I'm not gonna watch. I'm building the set. If I don't build a god type in my uh, hand, it's destroyed. It's a god type. It's not destroyed. Yeah, everybody. Maybe white. Why is that kind of white? Hey, DT. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. DT. Okay. Come here. All right. First, I'm going to no, normal summon. Then, play. Oh, Connor. Yeah, I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. Just be afraid of that. Here's a Trevor Edmund. Those arms he has uh, right there literally go all like his own curve around and go around and grab his gun. Damn it. Monster Negate. All right. Well, I'm right back to it. Uh huh. I guess I will be uh, needed. I guess you can all listen to the call. Okay, huh? oh, no, 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 no. I got a question. I want to play this, but it says Vendred, and that says it's a Raven Dread, but that one, and it's not a Vendred. It's, it's got Vendred. So it would work then? It's got still Vendred in the name because okay. it's quoting a Vendred. It's not stating it's unique Pacific Vendred. Since it's quoting Vendred, it's quoting anything with Vendred. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll play Ra Ra Raven Dread Evaluation. Yeah. This card can be used to ritual summon any Vendred ritual monster from your hand or graveyard. You must also, this is the part I get missed on, you must also tribute monster from your hand. Alright, uh, apologies there. I had to go answer the uh, call for the, uh, the stream table. Anyways, there's a question about using the card. It says Vendred, any Vendred uh, ritual monster. There's a card in her hand. Uh, it's called Revendred, but um, since the Vendred is in quotations, it's targeting anything with Vendred in the name, much like how there was a day of DD. But anyways, we're going to trigger the effect here to bring out a form of Synchron, of course, using the Hockey Fibrac. Um, is able to fusion uh, Synchro summon itself into the form of Synchron, form of Synchron, but obviously the draw. I'm surprised uh, Gage didn't go for the Nap Beast in the game. Um, so that he could uh, just stop it, but hmm, I guess not. I mean, he's he, well, he doesn't have the rap tea, but he's still got the Omni in the gate too of um, Pikamore Guardian as well. But, anyways, it looks like he's uh, Kay's gonna send out both the Vendred monsters so that she can um, activate the uh, Vendred ritual card. So both those, I believe one of them was a hound. I don't know what the other one um, was, but anyways, here comes Revendred. Uh, I forget what the revenge red, but it's a, a revenge red. So, anyways, then Mystic Mine um, that will trigger the Nat Beast here to uh, mill the card so that it can um, negate the Mystic Mine so that, uh, yeah, so Gage can still play the game. By the way, if you did not know, Mystic Mine is actually getting its own card support. Yes, for Mystic Mine is getting card support because, because we need the card support for Mystic Mine. Yeah, that's how uh, that's how our world should work. Card support for Mystic Mai. 
But uh, that is the nature of this world order. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, Vendred monster... I'm pretty sure the Vendred core is not strong enough to tear through a Rapti, a Nat Beast, a Kikamore guard, Guardian, um, and that... Uh, and the Synchro, uh, Formal Synchron is in defense, so it wouldn't matter anyways if it got hit. From the attack, but I don't know if the Vendred monster can um, even do much here either way. So, uh, so, so anyways, there was a question. Oh, but I guess, I don't know, maybe the Vendred monster is at least 24, because it's 19, 22, 22. Personally, if you have the memory, if you had the attack power over, get rid of the map beast so that you can so you can play all your spell cards without having the map beast go off. Though map beast is pretty uh, detrimental against your opponent as well because of the fact that you have to mill. Um, but the Rapti is also dangerous as well because the fact is it can trigger yet again on his turn and allow him to get yet another um, uh, uh, get himself another. Um, get the mill the top five again so I mean it's either way if, if you could find a way to deal with the nappies to remove it off the field then that's not a bad bad thing if you can't really deal with it then um, I'd say try to get rid of the rap teeth and force him to have any card in hand that allowed him to get an emancipator searcher but uh, either way that is of course uh, my strict opinion on how I would kind of go through it um, it looks like, yeah, Adam Emancipator Monster will be the one that is going to go down to the Vendred Monster. And it looks like it's going to then trigger its effect. And it looks like it's going to be able to banish a, um, a, uh, zombie or a Vendred Monster. It must be able to get either a power gain or, um, some way of attack or burn damage attached to it. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Revendred. Revendred. I think that's Revendred Executioner. Yep, Revendred Executioner. Uh, basically, this player event comes Revendred Slayer while on the field. When it's in the field, your opponent cannot target cards where you control with card effects except this card. If this ritual card is destroyed by battle or destroyed by an opponent's card effect, its owners, you can add one Vendred monster from your deck to your hand. Okay, I don't think that is it. Don't think it was Reven. Well, let's see. Well, it it is 3K, and I doubt that is what. <laughs> let's just see what Reven. I guess there's Revendred Slayer, which I believe that's what that is. Revendred Slayer. Hey Tyler. Uh, if this card battles an opponent's monster and damage quickly creature effect, you banish one zombie monster from your graveyard. It gains 300 attack. Um, it's at 24. If this ritual card is sent for the sent to the graveyard, you can add one ritual spell from your deck to your hand. If you do, send one Vendred monster from your deck. To but anyways, there is the Vendred. But yeah, um, the ritual card she activated was Revenge Red Evolution. But uh, the problem is still K is still definitely battling uphill because now um, there's not a Rapti and looks like the water monster as well. <laughs> well, monster reborn the water monster, but Ra monster reborn by the Rapti and then of course go for the full uh, evolution line here. And that beast is still active as well, being able to still turn off spell cards. Um, anyways, the Revenge Red um, Slayer is of course activating here as well for its. Uh, So, uh, v Vendred Hound is right now out onto the field, so we'll exactly have to see um, where exactly we go from here. Um, then we have uh, Flip Off, so it looks like. Um, but, anyways, it uh, looks like the trap card may have been triggered, but not fully triggered. In normal circumstance, we would, um, we'd have that fizzle, but. So anyways, it looks like the water one is going to send back the hand, and then we're going to swing for 3k, and... And so it looks like the trap court actually didn't even have a physical target to go for. Um, 
But um, yeah, so Gage taking the games there. Congratulations to him. Um, but uh, but uh, but uh, yeah. So Gage uh, took the win there. Welcome, folks, to the final round. Our two undefeateds, and it is not Zan at our undefeated table. It is Malachi and Jeff. Jeff and Malachi had a quite a good uh, game there towards in the end, but I didn't put it on. I wanted to get to, uh, some different people and have some fun. But anyways, Jeff is running Sword Soul, um, an older archetype, and as well represented to the meta as it was when it first came out in the time. And Malachi running Code Talkers, an interesting one. I have seen this on Master Duel. I've never played it on Master Duel, but I've I've watched some of what he can do. And let me tell you, uh, the board presence can be pretty pretty big. So, anyways, this is our last round. One of these two will be seeing their deck list up on my YouTube channel. So, uh, who will be the one to have their deck list put up? Mm -hmm. I wonder. I wonder. I know these deck lists aren't, uh, the deck lists won't be like winners of the Nationals or anything, or winner of the YCS, but I think it's fun to put up deck lists of our local players. I mean, they, they put in all this time and work to really understand their decks and everything. But anyways, here we go for the rolling for both our players, as are all our players are setting up here to find out who will be taking who will be taking the good win and all of the prizing. Mm -hmm. All of the prizing. All right. So, without a doubt, I think everyone is nearly ready, so we will be going here uh, quickly and soon here. Um, so, I think it is time to start. All right, here we go for Code Talkers. And so Code Talkers is um, a cyber style deck. But anyways, the uh, spell card there is a continuous spell card that allows him whenever he special summons a Code Talker to start uh, getting um, cards to his hand. So anyways, he's gonna activate uh, Ladybug here. That's gonna allow him to get a cyber monster to his his hand. So anyways, he's gonna get a uh, the Code Talker here that allows him to link summon from his hand. Use it as link material from the hand, so he doesn't have to actually summon it to the field to get it. So it looks like he's going to go take that with the debug, and um, that's going to start the Code Talker engine. So, anyways, here we go. So, anyways, the first one is Code Talker. The uh, so, anyways, um, a, a nice little Code Talker, and then, like I said, the. Uh, but anyways, um, the Iblia course is coming. Um, it looks like we got the spell car trap card in. But anyways, he's adding, of course, the um, the Co Talker monster here. Um, Co Talker gains five attack for each monster. This card points to cannot be destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effect. While this points to a monster. But anyways, now he's going to have Sign and Mining going off here as well. So anyways, that's going to allow him to add a level 4 or lower Cyburst monster to his hands. So yes, without a uh, doubt, there's something uh, definitely interesting about the ability of... So anyways, Co-Generator and Co-Talker are going out to make another uh, Link monster here. So here we go, the Synet coding yet again. And that will trigger here. And he's gonna... So anyways, Dock Scraper is going out to the graveyard. It does have the ability to special summon itself back to the field. Synet. And then uh, he's going to summon the CS Kyver to because a monster was special summoned here. Uh, 
So anyway, Sinek Codec, as is what it's called, if a code talker monster is special summon from uh, your extra deck to the field, um, except during damage, if you could uh, target one of those uh, monsters, add one cyber monster with the same attribute from your hand to the from your hand, from your hand. You can also cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck for the rest of the turn, except cyber monsters, which his deck is all entirely cyber, so it's not going to come out. So anyways, here comes the Ibli. He's going to link summon the Ibli, so that way he can trigger the Ibli's effect to special summon to Jeff's side, meaning he can't special summon any monsters to his side of the field. Then he's going to summon one of the uh, bigger co-talkers. But yes. So anyways, um, the other co-talker is inverted. One he probably used a while ago. Inverted is, if this card thinks something, you expect someone to type monster from your hand to the zone this card points to. So really neat. Um, but anyways, he uh, has out yet another Cybers monster. So this deck is basically all just Cybers. If you ever seen it in uh, Master Duel, what well, dude. So anyways, now he has Access Code Talker. It will, um, I believe, he probably sent for a three, so that will trigger to give him um, fifty-three thousand there on the Access Code Talker. So anyways, then he's going to bring out a Paraloxy because again he. Uh, he did um, special summon out a link monster and then he can target one of the arrows. Then he brings out the other Paroxy. They both go to be four ofs. And then he's going to. So no more effect. And then here comes a, uh, another whew, Cybers monster. So basically, uh, very interesting where he, uh, he stands. I'm not exactly sure what his first um, Cybers monster is, but I. It looks like he's going to send both those off. That's going to get him yet another um, Link Summon here for uh, Water Mage. The Mage allows him to special summon out a uh, Cyber's Monster in his graveyard out to the field. And then, um, so he's going to be a Splash Mage. He's going to special summon out the one that he just um, summoned a while ago. So he can end on an Axis Code. An, um, an access code as well as ending on um, even Firewall Dragon because Firewall Dragon now can only special summon Cyber Monsters because it did get its errata to where it's not a broken card. So anyways, his sign at Codex, so that is no doubt about it. He's triggering that, so that no doubt I believe is probably a uh, Code Talker inverted there. So without a doubt, this deck is very, um, just, just very powerful in how exactly he's building up his board states and everything. Um, especially the uh, co Sinet uh, codec being able to give him all of this um, amazing, uh, just amazing power and ability to constantly just cycle through his deck, search out what he needs, and then now he's going to go for another link here. And that is going to give him what exactly? So now he's going to go Firewall. Firewall, if you don't know, used to uh, be able to special summon and be able to loop and do stuff back in Goki format. Can't do that anymore. Um, but can at least special summon stuff. Can at least special uh, Cyber sponsors now. So he's not completely as broken as he was. So there's a look of whether or not he's trying to attempt to do some linking here of whether or not he wants to uh, think about linking. That is the question of the day. Do you link or do you not link? The question of the great day in itself. So it looks like he is going to take his link monster and his monster there, and he is going to go for uh, another access code. And I suppose, um, since it had to be at least a three of its, um, so it's uh, with 53. All right, apologies. So anyways, he's got 253, um, 253, uh, 25300 access code talkers, and then a nice looking firewall dragon. Um, all, uh, I think Firewall's 25 or 26, if I'm remembering it. I don't think it was overly strong. But anyways, here we go for Sword Soul. Sword Soul, without a doubt, is a very interesting deck, because a lot of times they're, they're all, I think, worms. They're all worm monsters. Um, 
They're all were monsters. So anyways, that is, uh, looks to be Sword Soul of Mao Mew. And then it looks like that's going to go right into it. Anyways, they're also all... So, um, if this card is normal, special from real one source soul card, or, um, so that's not it. Well, maybe Ibli is a tuner. Is Ibli a, is Ibli a tuner? I know Ibli is something. Ib. I'm a corruptor Ibli. I don't know. So, uh, whatever he summoned had to be a tuner, because how requires a, uh, tuner. I believe they have a, a tuner in their ranks. Or are they just... Hmm. I know the tokens are tuners. So they, there's there's Ecclesia. Um, that is one of the uh, Sword Soul that's not really a Sword Soul, but is used to search out like Sword Soul cards in the D deck. Uh, it, it was I think it had like a Secret Rare and it was a Starlight Rare as well. But anyways, he's going to start revealing here, and it looks like a Sword Soul uh, monster to then... Um, it looks like... Uh, no, it's a Dogmatica. It looks like he's going to go um, bring... So it looks like he's triggering um, a Firewall here. Um, um, so, yeah... It, So it looks like there was a reverse on the board. Oh no, the other monster, the Tinny. I forgot. Yeah, the Tinnies are using here because they're one. So anyways, it looks like the uh, card here is a Chris Chaining. The Tinny will come back in. Um, the monster there that is chained will uh, trigger its... Now we'll trigger its effect. It looks like Jeff is going to go for a nice search. So it looks like then that's... Now that's going to get be able to get the Sword Soul uh, Mao Yu out to the field. That's probably what the... So it looks like the then the Sinet is of course I think it's special here I'll I'll get the Sinet coding. Sinet codec. So in a way, Sinet codex other main ability is that um for cyber monster. The code talk monster is special summon field. You add one um basically it is also not once per turn. That you're handing only. Since you cannot add other monsters with the same attribute codec this turn, per, oh, once per chain, so it's only a once. So how did that thing get banished? Sinet codec doesn't banish. If a code talker monster does one, you feel so then you can target one of those monsters, add one Cyber's monster with the same attribute between your deck to your hand, you also you can also put some monsters for your extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Cyber's monsters, even this like all right, I'm um, not exactly sure how um, that car got banned. Eh? But anyways, here comes a Sword Soul Strategist, Long Yoon. Um, you can discard one other Sword Soul or Worm monster, special summon this card from your hand, then special summon one Sword Soul token, which the uh, the card is a token. Well, the token, the player's uh, special summon, they cannot special summon monsters from their extra deck except synchro monsters. Okay, well, it's not hard. Uh, Sword Soul is all about synchro monsters. This card is sent from the uh, to the graveyard. It says card is sent to the graveyard. Synchro material, you can inflict uh, 1,200 uh, points of damage to your opponent. You can only use each effect to Sword Soul Strategist, Lil Gwyn, once per turn. So, uh, basically, it looks like one of the Code Talkers um, did get spun. They get spin back, so that will remove that. And anyways, we now have it. Um, the token are level four. So that is, without a doubt, looking like Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign. Uh, Qin Ying. Qin Ying. Um, Qin Ying is for, ba for each banished card. This card gains one uh, hundred points. 
no protection against uh, against the second degree. So, anyways, um, uh, one hundred against one attack defense, and all monster opponent lose one hundred attack defense. If this card would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish one card from graveyard instead. If a card is banished, you can banish one card from both your opponent's field and graveyard. So that is one of the main uh, one monster they can go into. The main boss monster is Sword Sword Soul Grandmaster uh, Shikshawa. Um, tuner and one non wire wire tuner mo monsters. If this card single summon, you can add to your hand one banished sword soul card from your deck, and then quick effect you can banish one sword soul card or war monster from your hand or greater target one other effect monster in the field and negate its effect until the end of this turn. So, I truly believe that is the other uh, the other sword soul. I think the grandmaster actually has two printings. Well, I guess there's one more. Sword Soul Sinister Sovereign Queen Quitsing Longoon. But I'm pretty sure he has up there uh, Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Xing Ying. So, uh, it is losing 300 here, so that is, of course, the Soul Soul Purim's Provern, uh, Sorgen, and then that, then they're gonna just swing into the Firewall here to remove it. Again, the Access Go Talker still is a very dangerous threat because of its, um, banish a different attributed Link monster from your graveyard to destroy one of your opponent's cards. Um, Sword Soul guy, like I said, can save himself. This card would be destroyed by your opponent's card effect. You can banish one card from your graveyard instead. If this card is banished, except during the damage step, you can banish one card from both players. You can banish one. So anyways, here we go for the Axis Code Talker's effect. It's triggering. It's going to probably... So anyways, here goes the Axis Code Talker to destroy the face down. Um, that will remove, looks like an emergency teleport. He's going to banish again to target. Um, so anyways, it's going to come and destroy itself, but it's going to go, um, the Sovereign's going to banish out a, a Sword Soul. A, no. But it can... Uh, Banish one card from your graveyard if this card if this card would be destroyed by a card effect. Banish one card from your graveyard instead. So um, and then um, yeah, that uh, banishing effect by the way is not once per turn. It is until um, either your opponent burn, who burns through everything. But anyways, um, if a card card would be ban is banished. If a card is banished, you could target, you could banish one card from both your opponent's field and or graveyard. So basically, yeah, the code talker there couldn't, um, even though you can't not respond to the effect, it's still, the response is to respond to the activation of the effect. Um, the sword soul is not a response. It's not a re truly a response, it's a uh, ability to save itself from uh, being killed and then basically being able to trigger its effect. Um, Malachi did build up a little bit before, but, um, it's, so it's going to be up on an uphill battle here because the fact of, um, I don't know if the, uh, the Sovereign Chinbong, no, you can only use this effect of, so he can only use the banishing, banish to banish from field and grave once per turn, but the uh, saving effect is, uh, permanent. It's not a once per turn, nor a once per chain, or anything like that, so his effect to banish looks to be the only thing. So in a ways, it looks like we're going to go for a uh, material here. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have the, uh, Okay, so basically Code Radiator's effect allows me, like, if this card was going to be used as Link Material, to target two monsters instead. Would those two monsters, like, be used as Link Material, or no? What do you say? I'm uh, uh, saying if this card is sent as Radiator. Link Material. You don't get to use them as... Yeah, oh, question, question on Code Radiator. It says on the end, it says uh, when I use this card as Link Material, if I would be, uh, target two monsters instead. If, if that monster would be used as Link Material. No, I'm saying... But if it on the field uses Link Material? Yes, on field. Okay. Using Link Material. Yeah. Uh, what about it? Uh, it says instead, instead of like, using... Like, it would target two monsters instead. If this card on the field was using Link Material, you can target two monsters instead. Okay, so what's the question? So, like, what, basically the question is, would these two actually go to Grave, or do I just target them to Link Summon? They have to look at your eyes. Not my friends. I know what you're saying. If this card is sent from your hand, it the Grave to Link Summon of the Code Talker monster. All right, so, norm, so I normal summon uh, Code Radiator. Okay, yeah. Uh, I was going to use its effect so I could link off, and the bottom effect says that... Doesn't have, the effect doesn't activate to link off, and you just can... Well, link. yeah, if, you, if this card would be used as Link Material, Target two cards target instead. Yeah. yeah. Would that yeah. still be yeah. Link Material? It doesn't On send field? them. It changes it to zero and negates their effects. Yeah. No. It says if this card is used as Link Material, you target no. my thing. Yeah. You can only, and then, then this if this card was in field, you can target two monsters. So yeah. 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 you can target two monsters instead of Don't one. But it turns, it does not remove them off the field, it just turns them into zeros yes, and basically summoning. just like, are you, negates like their effects. Like, you two off, right, Malachi? <laughs> no, this, I was going to use this to go into this, I just didn't know... Okay, you, you, used, it, you used it to go into Talkback Lands here? Uh, yes. Okay, okay, yeah, you used this material. You the effect targeting both of them, yes. Okay, so, both of them, so... So, this is the board state before you've done anything. Okay, yeah, you yeah, that was the board. It, then linked it off for that. So, so you can do that, and then you can activate... You can't activate codec because it's not a code talker. Uh, yeah, talkback lancer. But no, you made it sound like more confusing than that. Uh, <laughs> I'm extremely. You made it sound like you're using my monsters and link material. Yeah, that, that's what I was. I didn't think I could do that. No, no. <laughs> code radiator just. And that's because code that's radiator when it's when it's, when it's when it's tar when it's sent, then you can target two guys and change their text to zero, and then uh, have them text negated. All right. So you targeted these guys. They're now zero. They're text negated. <laughs> Yeah, this card would use it. Oh, only for a code talker. Talkback Lancer is not a code talker. So. Oh, no, for a co so he won't trigger the effect because it's not a code talker. Okay. You're not doing anything then. You have 12 there. Uh, correct, yes. So that's it. That's all I do. <laughs> and his turn. I hope you enjoyed that uh, weird uh, commentary. But there was a question about the uh, card there going into the uh, Talker Lance, but again, the uh, Talker is not a code talker, so the uh, Code Radiance actually doesn't get any of its effects here because um, it was not going into a code talker monster. But otherwise, it would have, if it does go into a code talker monster, it actually is able to, um, it is able to be able uh, to target two of your opponent's monsters and make change their attack to zero and um, their effects in the game. By the way, it did not save once per, uh, until end of turn there. At least I didn't read it in all the mass amount of card text. It lives inside half of Yu-Gi-Oh cards now, but uh, it looked to be permanent on the uh, card. Uh, All right, so uh, Malachi still is on the uphill battle because, again, um, the Sovereign is still up there. Um, he still has Hauki Five Racks that can still trigger its effect. Um, but um, I don't know if Malachi even has any more rank uh, Link 1s left in the uh, the deck. Oh, I guess he does. Oh, there is a Bay Lynx. There, the Bay Lynx will then trigger its effect. That will allow him to get the Salomon Great uh, Field Spell, and the Ash Blossom is going to say no to that. So, um, well, it was try for the Bay Lynx. I don't know where you were going to take the Salomon Great uh, Field Spell. But uh, looks like Jeff is going to take game one there, showing the power of Sword Soul. Actually, I don't think we've ever had, actually, Sword Soul on any one of my... Um, any one of my um, channel. Any, actually, any one of my tournaments. Um, it's not, I think it's still a highly expensive deck. Um, let me actually check kind of where their price is set as our opponent. As our two players um, shuffle their deck, decide on their sides, and do all of that. Currently, the Sword Souls, uh, major things you'd need. Um, oh, wow, their uh, main link monster is 440. 
one of their main cards. So yeah, they they've lost a little bit of their value. Um, well, I guess no. I think Mo Mew actually got another printing. No, it didn't. Okay, so Mo Mew is their most expensive at like twenty three, <laughs> eleven. Um, their next expensive is not really anything else. Um, yeah, nothing else of the deck is really expensive. I mean, they use the tinny stuff as well since they're all worms to uh, facilitate your worm plays. But yeah, the only expensive thing is one of their main boss monsters, Sword Soul Mao Mo Yi. But yeah, they also have an in archetype uh, polymerization. No, ar in archetype uh, Monster Reborn. Yeah, I can still remember. The, I think this deck was, without a doubt, the um, big name um, deck of the format. Um, if Malachi is, doesn't have consistent colors, but okay, well, um, I got time. On the time, you only get three minutes, so I hope Malachi keeps under that. But I guess there was just some confusion on um, the question there. Even I was a little confused exactly what the question was. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Malachi here is just taking some time to side out what he wants to side out. There's a good chance he's probably going to be taking first to build a board. I don't know if he wants uh, Sword Soul to be going first and maybe build one of one of their... Because uh, I know they can get into uh, Fleur de Lis as well as their main uh, Negate monster as well. At least from what I've seen in the board states before. So, yeah. Um... Should be a little interesting to see kind of how, where um, we kind of go with all of this. So, anyways, um, yeah. So, yep. It, that Malachi did say he is going to go first. So, anyways, the code talkers will be going at first here, but it completely uh, makes sense that they want to go first personally. Alright. That's evil. Alright, right, so without a doubt, it's it's still very um, interesting exactly how all this the code doc, talker decks are literally working. So, anyways, we're going to start off with a micro quarter. Of course, that is uh, one of the main uh, boss monsters. It's going to begin its effect here. It's going. And then he's going to get uh, the Lancer here to hit. Uh, it's going to send for um, Lancer. That's then the sign it. Then the sign it is going to trigger itself as well. Um, it's going to allow him to get. Going to allow him to get what he needs to uh, go for the full nature of the deck. Interesting. They do actually do bailings in here. <laughs> so, anyways, um. The, He's already uh, pitched up the co-talker and the uh, MC himself, and then that's going to go, in. and then that's going to go into the other uh, inverted co-talker inverted, and it's going to cause the silence codec to trigger again, allowing him to get a, a co-talker of a different um, attribute. And he's going to bring out the Cyber's Converter to Special Summon itself, and then he's going to, just going to take those two, and he's going to, then he's going to just link those into Transcode uh, Talker, the good old Transcode Talker, one and only Talker for all of the fun of uh, Salaban Greats. So anyways, he's going to get uh, Code Generator here, then Transcode Talker is going to give him back the Tucker, so he's going to negate the effect there with um, Imperm. So that, that will put a little wrench in Malachi's plan to see how he can build up his board presence. So Code Generator and Transcode uh, going out here. That is a 3 and a 1, so he can go into a 4 here. Um, I'm pretty sure Extra Deck Monsters stay in the Extra Deck Malachi, not in the main. So anyways, here comes an Access Code Talker that is still a uh, Code Talker. So... So um, he's going to be able to add um, 3K to his access code talker, which will be now at 53. And then the access in the code, uh, sign it codec will now, 
will then trigger yet again, giving him yet another card again. He has to get a different attribute to the uh, co-talker that was played on the, the field. So anyways, he's going to get the Ibli here, so that he has it again, I'll read it to you. Um, you can target one other monster, add one Cypress monster with the same attribute from your deck to your hand. So if a co-target monster is best summoned from your extra deck to the field, except during that, you can target one of those mo monsters, add one Cypress monster with the same attribute from your hand. But the problem is down here, um, except um, you cannot add other monsters of the same attribute to your hand by the effect of sign that code. So we can't add another light because of access code uh, talker. Uh, that's so. So he's got an access code talker. He has two um, parallel X seeds right now. And of course, whatever he added off of the sign at coding. So anyways, those two are gonna go out. He's gonna go into a splash mage here. That will give him um, Splash Mage's effect to special summon a Cyburst monster from the graveyard. Again, a very strong card. It was how um, Simon Grates did a lot of things, but anyway, he's going to bring back the Cyburst monster here. Okay, those two are going to go. That's a two and a one, so that will grab him um, a three here. So this will bring out another Code Talker, and then that will trigger yet again the good old... So anyways, this uh, the one that he has actually uh, can stop um, field summoning, which is pretty nice on it. So anyways, um, so anyways, two fields have been... Uh, just one field here, Jeff. Just one field. It only turns off one. So anyways, one field has been uh, fully turned off. It looks like the... Second to the left field got turned off, but anyways, the uh, glider is down here. These two will then uh, link off. The question is, where is he going to go? Is he going to go into um, Firewall here? I would doubt he want to. Okay, so he is going to go into Firewall, and he's going to have Firewall's um, quick effect here, and he's going to be able to set one card, and that pretty much, I think, is how he's going to end it. He's going to have a 5,300... Uh, 5, Excess code talker, and he will have a 25, uh, 2500 firewall dragon. So it should be a lot of fun to actually see where this this uh, goes here. So this will be the end of it. So anyways, Jeff is going to draw here, and he now needs to break the board without using one of his uh, zones. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The Sword Souls have never proven that they need all five zones active at any one time. But anyways, here comes one of the Sword Soul, uh, one of the Sword Soul um, cards. So anyways, the spell card he activated was Sword Soul uh, Emergence. Um, add one Sword Soul monster from your deck to your hand, and if you, or if you control a Synchro monster, you can add one Worm monster from your, uh, one Worm monster you control. And increase or decrease the level by one until the end of the turn. Uh, if this card is banished, you can target one Sword Soul monster or Worm monster you control, increase or decrease its level by one. So he's going to trigger the Firewall to bounce back the Sword Soul monster here, and that just now will leave the token. But anyways, uh, we still have the 53 um, beat stick and the 25. Wow, Jeff's really not going to be able to get through much through this one. This one's going to be a little tough. It looks like he's going to activate, I believe, one, that's the one, the tinny. Um, one of the uh, tinny uh, uh, spell cards here, which are, the tinny are all worm, by the way. So anyways, it looks like he's just deciding on his grab here, and it looks like he's going to grab the uh, the Dark Tinny here, so that he can... Uh... Alright, well anyways, now the... Uh... So anyways, now he has, now Jeff does have another monster in his hands. It looks like he's going to be triggering a effect here. I think he sent the Dark Tinny to the... Uh... The graveyard, I forget which, but the tennis can do uh, very different things. But anyways, here we go for a summon of, I believe, the the water tinny. 
monster to the field here. Um, this, of course, will now start allowing him to get to that ability of allowing him to get to um, everything. So anyways, the token and the worm, are, or the, uh, the tinny, are going to go out, and that's going to summon it. Looks like the big negator, the... That, of course, is going to be uh, Sword Soul, Sword Soul Grandmaster Chish Chishawa. Um, this card, Synchro Summon, you can add one ha to your hand, one ban hand, you can add to your hand, or banish one Sword Soul monster from your deck. So, the question is, will Jeff banish or add? Quick effect, you can banish one Sword Soul Worm monster from your graveyard, hand or graveyard, then target one other effect monster on the field, and the gates effects until the end of this turn. I'm going to use one Grand Soul. Uh, one Sword Soul Grandmaster, uh, Chishawa, once per turn, only that once that turn. So it's a very a restrictive um, effect. It looks like he's going to grab the Taya here off of the Sword Soul. So anyways, the uh, Taya is going to get normal summon. He, uh, again, Jeff has a normal summon. He brought out the one Sword Soul by using its um, effect to bring it out. So anyways, he's going to... Banished, and then that is going to uh, that is the Taya uh, triggering its effect there. Sword Soul um, to Taya. Um, you can banish one Sword Soul Worm card from your graveyard, special summon, and then I think he says summon the one that gives minus uh, one. Okay, so so action. Summon, and then of course, since a card was banished, um, spin back a card, and then um, Jeff's going to take the win. Congratulations to Jeff. Okay.